His nana, his nana. Oh, well, I was the first one to touch him, so I guess that's why we're close. And he's my first grandson, so he's pretty cool. Me and him is good. I love him, he loves me. <laughs> this now time has been a constant transformation. Earlier this year being that nana transition. They've been waiting 15 years for this tour because I got a, I have two patches. I got one from the Scream tour with him and Bow Wow, and then I got one with him now. So those are 15 year backstage patches that I had. I was just so happy that she was able to, you know, give you guys some words of wisdom. And she was able to be in support of my journey in the, in the way that she was. You know, I will miss her so much. They will, they will know you and they know your business and know what you did, what you do, what you did, what you what gonna do. But they don't know nothing. <laughs> they just know what they see. They don't know the real, real him. Nana was everything to everybody, especially up. That was his anchor, his heart. She introduced the culture to him. She introduced his spiritual journey to him. This experience to be the firstborn and to continue on that legacy, you know, of family love, you know, the ritual of coming together, the ritual of, of sharing the information, the ritual of telling the truth, not always being able to please everybody, being okay with pissing some people off, being okay with, you know, having an opinion. I greatly owe that to my Nana. I, I greatly owe that to Omalafe. Nana is not gone. She's transitioned, but she's still with O, and she still has arms around him. And one thing I could say unequivocally about O, he is covered. The ancestors, the angels, his Nana, he's covered because there's so many people that want to do him harm. We all find solace, you know, remembering Nana. You know, there's an altar for her in the family home. You know, we all just greet her, we all rejoice her and celebrate her. But yeah, she was special, incredibly special. I'm just so happy that she was there for me and I was able to be there for her and I was able to take her on trips and I was able to do things for her that, you know, no man has ever done. So I would cherish those memories. I miss her. Outside, Millennium Tour. Oh yeah, we back outside. We outside. We outside, bitch. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I'm outside. We outside. Huh? We outside. We outside. I'm outside. Yo, oh, the tour starts October 1st. Where you gonna be at? We outside. Coming to your city. Let's go. It's probably been a man and you didn't lost your smile. <laughs> yeah. Can't play. Shawty get it poppin' like a champagne She like nice things and the wrong friends Even for the money she do not change Drip, 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 ice cream Get a double scoop, but she pricey In a Lamborghini looking icy The difference between 2019 and 2020 was It was a whole different production Considering that I haven't been with the group in 15 years, you know, that approach, those choreographers, a completely different setup from the 2020, which got into more of me and Bow Wow and our songs and the Scream Tour-esque vibe. Me being the headliner of the Millennium Tour, you know, with my co-headline Bow Wow, I mean, the energy was just different. And also, we only got to do five shows before it got shut down. 
No one planned for the pandemic to happen. No one planned for all our buses to have to drive all the way back to where they came from. We didn't know when we would be able to get the tour back popping again. Year and a half, almost two years, we finally got back on the road and it was a bit of a challenge. If they could just go out a little slow. Boom, boom, dig it on, boom. Ooh, ooh. We worked everything out, obviously. I am so happy to be a part of something that you can really only look to the past, like nostalgia. I've been in Omarion <laughs> since I first saw him on 106 in Park. We go way, way back. back way to back. AJ and Freeway. Bringing memories back of how sacred that is. And that's really why I'm so happy and so thankful. And I would say thankful in the capacity of like, you know, just my fans really, you know, feeling a part of my journey and me being a part of their journey. Just like they inspired me, I'm able to do the same. Hey! The Millennium Tour brand is doing well, to say the least. It is thriving, and it's all because of the fans continuing to support. Yeah, we took that thing in the national and sold out the O2 Arena in the UK. from a representative of the three boys. And, you know, they basically said that they wanted to come to the Millennium Tour too to support me. Based off of how things were left, because I just didn't understand it. This obviously has to do with opportunity. I think it wouldn't be right if I didn't take this moment, bro, to publicly apologize to you, man. I did some fucked up shit to my brother. Some snake ass shit. And I'm not proud of it, man. So I want to sit here humbly and sincerely apologize for you, to you for any turmoil or dysfunction I caused between you and your family, bro. It's all good, man. Thank you. I think that it was something that, you know, Drew wanted to do, you know what I'm saying, rightfully so. To be able to do it in front of all of the fans, though, you know, I felt like that had a more symbolic meaning, you know, not just for me, but, you know, for all that it is that I represent as an individual and as a person, because a lot of the times people go through things and they just don't know how to accept that it is what it is. And you know, a long time ago, I accepted a lot of things about certain people in my life, on my path, and those people that I have crossed paths to be of a reference and also to be a clue, you know, to something maybe it is that I want more of or less of, you know, something that I, you know, should cherish or, or dissolve myself from. So, you know, I thought this was a great opportunity, you know, to really see, you know, if, you know, Fizz is man enough to stand up in front of me, look me in my eyes and apologize for the things that, that he did to me. They accepted. It was like the first time was gonna be us like meeting on the stage. So, you know, they came out, number one, you know, Boog wasn't there. And then he also felt like he didn't need to apologize, you know, which is crazy. You know what I'm saying? Um, just because, you know, a lot of the time, you know, when we're going through things, you know, we might not mean to hurt someone. We might not, you know, we might, somebody might get an accidental. It's just respectful to apologize for known and unknown pains, you know, towards people and or situations. Book didn't show up. Um, you know, and Raz was there, and I think that Raz was more so just caught up in the moment that he didn't feel that it was necessary, you know, to say anything, you know. And it wasn't that I was looking for an apology from Boog and Raz, but, you know, 
It was a lot of things going on that, you know, was spoken and unspoken that should have been acknowledged in that very moment. You know, even though it didn't go as awesome as it, as it could have gone, you know, that definitely was an opportunity and moment for me to be able to, you know, close that chapter um, for myself, you know, and, and just realize that people are who they are. And, you know, you do better. You do better if you just accept people for who they are. So professionally, you know, um, I continue to maintain my integrity and my workspace environment uh, to be a positive one. As far as any uh, business status, you know, we have all went our separate ways uh, after coming together, um, you know, for our 15 year anniversary. And I, I want to just remind everybody, thank you so much for making it such a huge success. But everybody is not meant to, you know, continue on that road with you, you know. Some people you just, you know, you could just cross some paths and, you know, sometimes that could look like 10 to 20 years, you know, in order to really, um, you know, get that information and, and, and realize the importance of those experiences. So, you know, I honor B2K, I honor, you know, this group is being a foundation for me, you know, to transform into, you know, my higher self, you know, my art. I always say this, but I think that there's something to be said about that small class of artists that come from group, you know, that share the stage with people. When that light come on, it ain't just about self, you know, and it's just not about being, you know, highlighted, you know. It's about telling a story. It's about sharing experiences. I'm in rock. I'm so excited. I got the call from Versus. As they say, as the culture say, you know, I'm ready to get my flowers. I'm gonna be alongside Mario. Someone who has shared a musical journey with me. We've been through similar things. Versus about to go way up. We'll be ready to go at six o'clock. Even if that means that sound check is happening while they're opening the acts. Yeah. They're playing, right? Yeah. So you got all professionals here. Yep. They know how to adjust, right? Yeah. The other issue is, as of this moment, there are no talk back mics. So you may have to cue the band. They can't talk to each other to know what's happening. They only can hear. The whole night was confusing. It was chaotic. Sound check didn't happen. You know, um, they were letting people in the doors before they had even got everything set up and the sound check together. It was a circumstance of what could possibly go wrong went wrong. You know, the original front of house guy got COVID, and so he couldn't come, and there was an 11th hour replacement. We tried to have our own front of house and, and monitor engineer. Front of house is the engineer that's literally in the front of the house, and his job is to ensure that there's an adequate mix of all of the band uh, and the vocals. You know, there's different elements to mixing vocals. You know, there's ways that you can make some of the greatest singers sound or, and vice versa, you can make singers that sound okay sound great, you know, because there's certain things you can do in the mix. And a really good front of house guy knows how to bring that all together and mix it so that it sounds balanced in the house, right? If we didn't have the team we had, this this would be a shit show. Oh, a like complete and utter shit show. They were used to like DJs and rappers. That's it. Yeah, like a club. Yeah, and, and that's not what this is. No, so and Thomas is straight. He's like, okay. What was happening? And for the rest of the world, how y'all feeling? Thank y'all for your patience. So fast forward now to, you know, Owen and Mario are coming on and I'm getting texts from my daughter and she was like, 
oh, sound is crazy. And I'm like, what? You know, because broadcast sound is a different engineer, front of house sound is a different engineer, and monitors is a different engineer. So I go to front of house and I see someone and I see when O is up, he has his level in the house all the way up, max to 10 and everything else, instruments and all the mixes down. I was like, what's happening? I said, you know, bring this up. Like I'm trying to tell him to do this. Then when Mario comes on, he pushes a button and it all goes to these preset levels. And I'm like, okay, what's happening? The group and I thought y'all was going to do a reunion tonight. You ain't invite him. So I invited him myself. Hey, yo, Biz. Biz, Raz. Look, come out here. The after effect of it, to have, you know, Mario, you know, kind of really go overboard with the comments on social media, you know, and when I kind of mentioned it to his manager, he's like, oh, you guys think we're serious? We're just having fun. You know, we're having fun at the expense of, oh, and then you got the other members of B2K hopping on board. It's like, okay, you know. Just let's be clear. Did y'all see the verses? <laughs> yeah, of course, everybody saw the verses. I thought it was amazing. This guy. What? Stop capping. What's up, man? <laughs> <laughs> One thing about O, he's incredibly resilient and he's also incredibly accountable and responsible, right? And I told him the issues that I witnessed on the soundboard. He was like, what? It's like, I, I mean, you know, I can't explain it, but whoever this gentleman was, he had all of Mario's levels preset by a push of a button, had all of yours down with just your, your dry vocals as hot, hot as they could be, you know? So there was just one failure after another. And one thing I said to O, I was like, you know what? Nothing happens to you. It all happens for you. I said, we're not gonna understand how, how this is gonna benefit you in the end. But what I can tell you is that this, this sucks, it feels horrible, but it's happening for you. There's a lesson. We gotta understand whatever the lesson is. And that was where he really gathered his solace, you know? And he was okay with it. The very next day he was fine. In light of all of the challenges when it came to Versus, it still was the biggest Versus. You know, I'm hearing so many conversations happening. Who's your top male singer? No one was speaking about that, you know, prior to the Versus. So to still be a conduit, I honor that. <laughs> Interesting night, <laughs> but definitely still a great night. Anytime you hit the stage, you're vulnerable. You're opening yourself up to, you know, the world. And that's the special thing about being an artist is, you know, getting to the stage every time to express. Got that fire, I can lie to you. It's a sacred art. And a lot of the times, you know, you're judged for that. You know, you're judged for your your not so perfect moments. So I had to say goodbye to you. Yeah. And it's okay, you know, it's okay for me. Cause if I didn't I'd be lying. You will always see me grow. Forward is a brand with Live Nation that reached out and said, hey, we want to build a show around O. You know, we want to do an R&B serenade, you know. Um, who would O like to have as a part of it? And we suggested Mario. Uh, again, you know, another opportunity that we suggested Mario for. They invited Pleasure P and we're like, okay, you know, that, that's cool, that'll work, you know. And so we were all good, you know, that's how we were rolling. And O was always the headliner. That was never a question. And whenever they perform, it's not been an issue of any kind of ego or anything like that. Millennium Tour O headline for Versus, you know, he was invited and he was asked, who do you want? And then for the R&B serenade, the same thing, right? So that's a fact. That's 
So we get there. When we had our initial conversations, you know, they wanted us to do a track show. And we've spent a lot of years building O's touring business. And so he doesn't do track shows. He does live performances. That's his thing. And so I had to let him know that, you know, hey, we have to advance a live band. We can trim it down. You know, we can just do drums, keys, and a DJ, but we have to do a live experience. So we planned and advanced that well in advance, right? So we knew that Mario and Pleasure were gonna do track shows because that was the nature of this very intimate setting. And that was what was the understanding. So fast forward, we get there, the MGM team, the Feminine Forward team, highly professional, highly efficient. After we completed our sound check, my production manager gives me a call and he said, hey, they told me to ask you this. I think I know the answer, but I'm just asking because I said I would. I was like, okay. It's like, you know, Mario's team is asking if they could use our drum set. I was like, no, it's, it's preset. It's preset for our drummer. We advanced it. It's almost like asking to use somebody's toothbrush. That's how tailored the settings are, right? It's like, no, that's not gonna work out. I'm sorry, you know, and that was a no. So fast forward. Um, one of our team members are in there placing towels and water, you know, just an intern, young lady, and she's approached by someone. And he's like, what are you gonna do, report to Michelle? And she was startled, you know, she said he had alcohol in his breath and he like low-key accosted her almost. She's like, no, I'm just here. We're backstage with Mario, he wouldn't even tell me his name, right? And he said, because I'm rec recording, obviously, because like, we like him, whatever. And he's like, you recording a report back to Michelle and Omarion. I was like, no, we're just here. Like, I'm just trying to drop this towel off. Like, it's cool. Whole time, like, yelling in our ear, saying shit in our ear, whatever the fuck else. But he was like, on us, yes or no? Like, painted on us, like, drunk too. Like, it was very strange. That's it. So, fast forward, it's time for her to take the stage. The band comes on, they uncover the drums to find that they had been totally sabotaged. Every single drum head had been pierced with these 12 inch shears. Um, the power cord had been ripped out of the drum pad. All of the patch, you know, so that the, the uh, audio could go from the drums could be heard had been ripped out. Something that really would have shut it down. And plus, Mario did run over on his set. So these are all things is like, man, this is a lot of, of, of things happening that could really, you know, either cancel his set or, or totally distract his set. Or something like that, right? Like, who would do this? And my first question is, who would even have access? Somebody sabotaged, tried to sabotage Marion's set, Marion's set, and uh, busted all the drum kicks on uh, my boy Jordan's drum because they were told that they could not use the drum. Wow. And also, what? Took the power? Oh, and took the power for it. I need a set. When I was walking um, to the stage, when Mario and his team was just leaving, I actually encountered Mario. Whenever he sees me, he always greets me and hugs me. This time he looked away and they were gangbusters getting out of there, like they were damn near running. And I was like, hmm, that's interesting. But I, I respected it. I thought he needed to decompress too, you know? So I just respected it. I didn't think much of it get to the stage and people are telling me that the drum set had been demolished. And I'm like, what? Are you kidding me? So it was just highly suspicious that, um, you know, we were asked if they could use a drum set and then suddenly the drum set is sabotaged. Well, to add insult to that, my drummer said, yeah, you know, I said, did you sustain any loss during this incident personally? Because we rented the back line, but did you have any of your own things? He said, yeah, I have my drum pad. He said, the power cord had been ripped out, but Josh paid me for it. I said, who's Josh? Oh, he's from Mario's team. I think he's his drummer. I was like, really? Why would he pay you for a power cord? He said, I think he felt bad. I said, felt bad about what? You know what happened? Because when Mario came out for his sound check and saw that O had a band, 
He was mad because he was told he couldn't have a band. I'm like, wow. So did anyone see anyone from Mario's team sabotage these drums? No. Is it likely that someone from Mario's team sabotaged these drums? Absolutely, unequivocally. And so much so that the amount of damage is at a certain dollar amount that is considered a felony, criminal mischief and vandalism. So the MGM is doing an internal investigation. Police is, are, are, the police are involved. And this is serious. You know, there's cameras all over. It's a casino. So while there are no cameras in the theater, whoever came into the theater, cameras caught that. Security caught that. So the dark always comes to light, but it's just quite unfortunate that something like this would happen. Why? You feel that level of disdain, envy, jealousy? Like, what is that about? You know, I, I've never understood it, and I don't understand it to this day. Again, Mario's not somebody that I saw in that light. I've always seen him as an upstanding young man. And if it wasn't him, and if it was anybody on his team, that's still, you know, that's, that's really, that's really low. The man is talented. And I seen it for myself today. He can sing. I know he feel like maybe they did sabotage his microphone because he was giving vocals tonight. All in all, it was a futile effort because everyone pitched in. We got new drum heads on there and the show went on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Hey, yeah. I'll be a modest girl. Yeah, you got it. Yeah. Body looking, got it. Call you a modest yeah. I can spend some time on you if you wanna. Yeah. See right through your disguise. Yeah. Girl, you know I smooth as a barilla. Right beside all our patients. Third eye activation. The thing about, you know, my involvement, you know, in my kid's life which is a thousand percent. You know, I take them to school every morning. I, I let them know, hey, dad is going on tour for two months. This is what that looks like. You know, I always make sure that I communicate with them and help them understand, you know, what my job is because it's so important as a father to be there for them, you know, and I don't miss nothing. Oh, no, no, they don't miss nothing either. They actually got to come on tour, you know, come on the tour uh, 2021. You know, when the tour ended uh, in the last year, the last couple of shows we had, um, one in and in Vegas, you know, they met me and um, they were able to, you know, go hotel to hotel and, you know, ride the bus. But to be able to have them involved and, and see, you know, uh, daddy is so important so they can understand. So. You know, they coming out on the road. This is going to be a, a, a natural occurrence, you know, probably up until, you know, when they decide that they want to go on the road because, you know, I got a talented family. And, you know, my kids, I don't know. We going to see what they want to do. But, uh, you know, shout out to my niece, Nami, too. You know, we got a talented family. So um, being on the road is a part of this family. Me and my son, we rode up in, in front of the tour bus many times, you know. So to be able to create those great moments on the road is, uh, is a beautiful thing. Singer, songwriter, producer, author, director. Also, while I was on the road, I was finishing up my book, Unbothered, The Power of Choosing Joy. Unbothered is about emotional intelligence. I take you through, you know, all of my gems, my breathing exercises, my mantras, my meditation. I was writing the book, I was making the album, and now we have created the scent Unbothered, which is unisex. The Unbother got notes. I don't know if y'all know about that, but let me hip you to this. You know, when you have a fragrance, you know, you don't want it to just smell like one thing. You want it to smell like a bunch of things. It's going to be a great gift for you and your lover. Y'all can both put it on. You know what I'm saying? And get it on. <laughs> Acting is inherent in all that I do. You know, there is a, you know, a certain level of showmanship that always comes with the quality of performing. So be expecting, you know, to see films and, you know, uh, TV, uh, all, you know, that have to do with this wonderful camera that loves me and I love it. <laughs> so.
I'm always constantly working on new things to make sure that my audience and, you know, everybody that supports me, you know, is fueled with uh, tools that have, you know, greater experiences. And now, no one's perfect. We all have these moments. But isn't it dope to come around to a moment again and be able to be like, you know what? <laughs> I know what this is. It's beautiful. What I want people to get from the docu is that no matter what, you have to keep going. You will have to face things that are uncomfortable. Anything that's worthwhile, you're gonna have to go through all of those emotions. When you do, you know, you're able to create something that no one could ever take from you. That is a sense of self, that is uh, awareness, that is love of self. I hope people appreciate my perspective. My journey has, you know, has challenged me and take me through the roller coaster of life. I'm looking ahead to continue to make this life experience better, not only for myself, but for those around me. I'm still that performer. I'm still that dancer. You know, I'm still that writer. I'm still that singer. And, and that's forever.